All right guys, welcome back to my channel. Today what I'm going to be doing is installing a fence energizer. This here is the Gallagher M60. All right, so the one I'm replacing was a solar powered Premier One uh, IntelliShock 30. Uh, that one was a 0.3 joule. This one here is 0.6 joule. This is a little bit more powerful. Um, Joule is just a, uh, a, a unit of measurement for the electricity. Um, it's, a, it's a pulse type electricity. It's like one pulse every second, basically. Um, you know, it's enough to make your hair curl, basically. So uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> so my old one here was a solar powered. That's the panel. That's the uh, IntelliShock here. It worked great, it was fine. Um, but if, if you had a few days, three, four, uh, three days at least, maybe even two days sometimes of no sunshine, um, this would get very weak and uh, wouldn't put out enough to uh, shock anything. Um, but when it was fully charged, it worked good. So the problem I had with this one is I noticed it even on sunny days, it wasn't working very well anymore, and then it finally stopped. So I opened it up, figuring, it, you know, I'd probably get a new battery for it. This thing, the ants, we have fire ants here like you wouldn't believe. They got in here through the bottom because there's little holes down in here in the bottom. They came in, filled this entire cavity, and inside here where all the electronics are, full of dirt. And everything corroded, the, all the connections all corroded, everything is just junk now, basically. Uh, I may save this solar panel here, uh, but other than that, it's, it's junk, basically. So that was a mess, and I should have known better the ants over here. If, what I should have done is taken this off the ground and put it up on top of something, basically. But if you know ants, they are also attracted to electricity. Uh, I don't know why, but they just are. So, what I'm going to be doing now is installing this unit. Obviously, it's not solar. Plug in. So, in the coop, I have electricity. There's really no need for me to have solar here. Plus, I have solar powered. My whole house is solar powered. And everything that has electricity on my property is connected to my solar system. So there's no need for me to have the uh, solar powered uh, fence energizer. Um, this will be mounted inside the coop, plugged in. I'm going to have some wires running the hot to the fence, of course, and the ground to the ground. Um, so let's get started with that. Also on the exterior here, right before the gate, I'm going to put this, this is an on off switch. So this would be off. And this would be on like that. The two terminals are right here, so that they're disconnected right now. You put your wires here, and when you put it on on, it reconnects them and sends the uh, charge to the fence. Um, I'm gonna put up, I'm gonna put that up here so my wife can just turn the fence off and then open the gate and go in uh, with no problems. And then when she's done, she closes the gate back and turns it back on. There, well, that's off. Turns it back on and um, the fence will be charged again. So the obvious thing here is the price too. Um, the IntelliShock, as of the making of this video, they run roughly 225, 250 and up. Um, basically in that range, I should say. 225, 250, right in that range. Um, this unit here um, is only, not only, uh, it was about $95 for, for the uh, fence energizer, and the uh, switch was $15. So the considerable savings, um, still pricey in my opinion, <laughs> but uh, a considerable savings from the solar powered one. But the solar powered are great if you have you know, no other choice, you can't run electricity to where um, your fence is, or if you're moving your fence around all the time, they're good for that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this 
right here like this. I got a plug right here, I can plug it in. And then I can run my, the wires to the fence out through the door here. Um, there should be enough room to squeeze the wire out. I'd hate to drill another hole through the side of the building, but if I have to, I will. That's better, it's a little tighter. So I decided to do, I got the energizer here. I think I'm gonna run the wires down here and rather than go out the door, I got real, no, there's really no room for me to go squeeze in between the door, it's that tight. Um, I'm gonna put the wire right out here and outside and then to the fence. So I just gotta drill a hole here. I hate to drill a hole, but that's just the way it's going to have to be. That'll do it. All right, so here's my hole that I drilled from the inside. I got some 14 gauge. This is a gray direct burial wire. So you can bury this directly into the ground. Um, I had this laying around, so cheap enough. <laughs> And we're just going to connect that to the uh, energizer. I'm going to put this down here like this. I'm going to bury it into the ground a few inches um, just so I don't trip over it and uh, connect it to our fence. All right, guys, if you can see what I've made here, the black here, we're going to use that one as a hot right here. And the white, we'll just use that one as a ground. So. Unscrew that. One. There, that'll work. And this ground here, we're not going to be using it, so we'll just leave it alone there. Okay, so I got my wire out here, and I need to run my wire down and then into the ground and to the fence here. So I got to dig myself a little trench. Okay, I got my trench dug out. And then right here, I'm gonna put a metal pole. Cause that's about the easiest thing for me to do. If I put a post in there, I gotta really dig it out and I really don't feel like doing that right now. This here is a one and a quarter inch galvanized, I think these are EMT. Yeah, EMT conduits actually. So if I put it here, it should be all right. So my wife comes in, shuts the fence off, opens the gate, it'll work. Make sure we're going in straight. That should do it. Okay, on the bottom of the switch here, just get a small screwdriver, lift that up. There, now you got access to the other screw hole right there. Okay, I connected my hot wire to one of the terminals 
and I'm going to put the ground right to the metal pole itself and it'll act as a ground. Okay, so on the top of the pole here, what I did is I put a one and a quarter inch PVC cap from the plumbing department. Um, it's a threaded cap and it fits right on this one and a quarter inch uh, EMT conduit. And it fits kind of snug. It doesn't go on all the way, of course, but you can just kind of snug it on there. And that'll keep the rain and all the elements and the bugs and stuff out of there. All right, guys, so I have it uh, connected here. I have it on off right now. I haven't put the cover on it yet, um, but let me bring you in close here and I'll show you what I did. Okay, so this wire here is the wire from the Energizer. comes from the Energizer and it goes to that terminal there. And then here is the out. So here I have the wire going out to my fence. I also have an extra wire going to this side of the fence because it does, this, my fence doesn't loop all the way around. So I have uh, the wire from the energizer coming in, and this is the out, and this just cuts the power off and back on again. So I apparently have a little short somewhere. I'm getting, uh, this is here, this is a checker from uh, uh, Premier One that I bought with that, um, the other energizer, the solar one, but it works for this also. You can see it's only going up to uh, four. Um, so if I turn it off, this side should not work anymore. And it doesn't, see? And this side, it's showing full eight. That's the full power coming from the energizer, so it's good. But when I connect it, the fence, I'm getting a short somewhere, a slight short. It's not a complete short. If it was totally grounding, it wouldn't even register here. Now I can put the cover, let me shut this off. Now I can put the cover on it. Don't be touching that terminal because it's on. <laughs> there, I put the cover on and now you're pretty safe as long as you don't get your fingers wedged under there. Um, so one word of advice uh, from my experience, these terminals where you hook up your wires, those are stainless steel bolts and nuts. The stud that's coming out of there is stainless steel and the nut stainless steel, which is a good thing. It, you know, keeps it from uh, corroding and rusting. The problem is when you have a stainless steel nut and bolt and you tighten it, you'll never get it off again because when you try to get it off, it, it basically welds together the threads. They, uh, they lock together. My, word, my uh, advice is on the terminals here, put a little grease, uh, any kind of grease, and uh, thread it on there. That'll lubricate the, uh, the threads and you won't get that welding effect or that uh, locking effect when you try to unloosen it. I learned that from my solar panels. Those were all stainless steel bolts and nuts on there. Uh, whenever I had to undo something to adjust it or whatever when I was putting it together, um, I couldn't because once you unloosen it, they just weld together the threads. Um, so that's the only downside about stainless steel. Uh, but other than that, just put a little grease on there and just snug it. Don't over tighten it. Just snug it and you'll be all set. Uh, I have to find this. There's a short somewhere. It's probably on the bottom of the uh, fence. This fence has been here for a while. Uh, along the uh, ground, uh, it's probably some weeds or uh, an ant hill rubbing up your, you know, built their, their ant hill uh, over the uh, fence and grounding it. But uh, other than that, uh, it should, looks pretty good. If you get the checker, put it on on here, and we'll put it on the fence. As you can see, the fence is charged, but it's weak because the fence is grounding. All right, guys, so thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video.